name is Christian with Ace Appliance out of Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. Today we're working on a, a Maytag electric dryer. Customer's complaint is it is not heating up. So what we're going to do is, of course, first thing is turn it on. Let it run for a few minutes. To make, you know, so if it is heating up, it's just producing low heat. We want to let it run for a few moments so the heat can come into the dryer. So right now it should be at least a little warm in there if it is going to heat up. So we're going to open the door and see if it is heating. It's completely warm. Uh, it's also on air fluff, so I'm going to turn it on regular heat and try it again. Notice that. Again, we'll let it run for a few moments to at least draw the warm air inside of the uh, dryer's drum. So now, we can go ahead and open the door, see if it's heating, and it's still not heating. So next thing we're going to do is unplug the unit. Alrighty. Okay. So the tools you'll need for this diagnosis and repair is a multimeter that uh, has an ohms and uh, continuity um, setting, a drill with a 5 16 drill bit, or a 5 16 nut driver. Also, you'll need a uh, flat blade screwdriver or a putty knife. In front of the dryer here, there are two tabs. You can use a putty knife or flathead screwdriver just to push on to pry up, open the, uh, the top here. Right, once, we, once we've done so, the inside components are exposed, a couple of the wires and whatnot. Now, uh, to take off this front panel here, there are two 5 16 screws on each side that hold the panel there. You want to go ahead and remove them both, and the front panel will tilt towards you. And once you've done so, you can remove the wiring that is on the door switch and the light. So make sure you do uh, notice where the wires go on the door switch itself. It's a yellow with a black tracer first. Take that off. Next is a gray wire. Go ahead and take it off. And then last is the white wire. Okay. Next is the wiring up front for the light. It's just a gray and blue wire. They're a different size, so there's no way that you can mix them up. Go ahead and remove those, pull them out the way. Now there's five, there's four or five sixteen screws on that hold this front bulkhead in place or the front bearing. Want to go ahead and remove that. Now let's remove the front bulkhead or bearing. You want to do the left side first. Remove it. There's a little pin that's sticks into the cabinet of the unit. Go ahead and remove it from the left side first, so you. It makes it easier to move the right side. So you don't want to break the blower housing or crack it. Once you're done, get it out the way. Next thing we want to do, still in the same, in the correct angle, we're going to go ahead and remove the drum. Now, to remove the drum, you have to remove the belt from the drive motor. So, go ahead and pull the pulley to the right and swoop the belt over the pulley. Pull the belt out with you so it doesn't get caught in anything when you take out the drum. You can pull out the drum. Whip the belt. So, obviously this is the obvious problem here. This is the wiring that goes to the heating element. It's burnt up and broken. So that needs to be replaced. It needs to be spliced a little bit. So that's bad for sure. Next thing we want to test, we want to test continuity going through this heating element. You also want to make sure it's not grounded out on each terminal. So the heating element's good. 
Next thing we want to test is the cycling thermostat. Cycling thermostat's good. We'll go ahead and hook the wire back up there. Last thing we want to test is the thermal fuse itself. Now when you test components, make sure that you take off at least one wire from the component because you could be backtracking the continuity through another part and it'll give you the continuity. So make sure you take off one wire when you're testing components. So, looks like the only thing that's wrong with it is somehow maybe it, pull, it got too hot, pulled too many amps, but this wire burns up. Here's the old plastic that surrounds the wire or the rubber. So what we need to do now is write up an estimate to have the wiring spliced. Okay, so we're going to splice a new wiring here. This is the, uh, it's, it looks like a 10 gauge wire going to the heating element. Now you want to cut off everything that's burnt. So you can see it bubbling up, looks like to right here. We're going to cut probably half an inch past that. So you can see the wire is nice and shiny. That means it hasn't got burnt or uh, damaged. So once you do that, we want to splice the wire back a little bit. Probably about 5 sixteenths of an inch, I would say. Once you've done that, we have a new wiring here. It's the same gauge. You can see it's, this is actually a wiring that goes to a different heating element on a Whirlpool product. So I'm going to put the two wires together. Put the wire nut on and just twist until you can barely twist anymore and to test what I like to do is pull on both sides if it doesn't come apart you know you did a good splice so once you've done that you also want to uh, at least put a little bit of tape on it to keep it together because uh, it is going to be heating up down here so when things heat up they do expand could cause it to come apart eventually so we want to put the tape on there to reinforce the uh, the, the, the nut tie, the wire nut. All right. So you can see it's nice and tight. You can go ahead and re-plug it in here, reconnect it, and start reassembling the dryer. So we're going to start reassembling the uh, unit here. First thing that goes in is the drum. Go ahead and slide it in. Make sure not to rip the cork, uh, I mean at the belt when you are sliding it in. Place it on the back bulkhead here. You want to place it on the rollers also when you do so. Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and line up the belt a little bit. And then reinstall the belt onto the idler pulley in the motor. So, again, to do this, you want to pull the idler pulley to the right, put the belt under the either pulley and hook it up on the motor pulley. There you go. Next, we want the front bearing to put on. And again, you put this part on the same way you took it off. So that means uh, this time, instead of doing the left side first, we want to start on the right side. You gotta line up the blower wheel on the housing here. First thing I like to do though is put the little latch in place. That way I'm not fighting with the blower wheel. Okay. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and reinstall the four or five sixteenth screws that we take took off earlier. Two on each side, pretty much at each corner. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and reconnect the wire terminals. So once we reconnect the wires for the light, we can go ahead and put the front panel back on. It goes on two clips on each side. There's openings. Go ahead and tilt the front panel towards you so you can put them in the clips. Once you've done so, you can start pushing it back. Now, to hook this wiring back up on the 
door switch, do it the same way that you took it off. So the white goes all the way on to the left, then it's the gray in the middle, and the yellow with the black tracer is the last one. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and push the dryer back, line everything up, and reinsert the two 5 16 screws that holds the front panel to the cabinet. And that's how you successfully replace a new wire for the heating elements on the Maytag dryer. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.